how to sample like that, I got the perfect video for you. What's up everybody, my name is Chris Reed and this is how to sample in Reason. Step one, prepare your sample. Preparing your sample is very easy in Reason depending on which instrument you're going to use. So for example, if you're going to use Mimic, preparing your sample can be as simple as finding the sample you want, dragging and dropping into Mimic, and then choosing slice mode. Your sample has already been prepared. You can dial down the sensitivity and that will give you less slices to be able to choose from, or you can increase the sensitivity, giving you more slices based on the transients of the sample. Another way that you can prepare your sample is by dragging and dropping it into the sequencer. And here you can get a little more strategic on how you actually prepare your sample. Double click on this sample and you will see similar slices as what we saw in Mimic. We highlight each of these slices by hitting control a deleting them and then you can choose which snap value you want and that will determine how many slices you have for this sample if i choose quarter notes and then i select my pencil tool i can then add in slices by quarter notes these slices are going to be equally divided by quarter notes from here, I just need to right click and hit bounce as a rex loop. Once I have created that rex loop player, I can then play the sample by using run or by playing the different sample chops on my MIDI keyboard. There are multiple samplers inside of Reason that I can use in order to find the right one to create my beat. Let's go through some of the pros and cons of each sampler. You could choose Kong. Now, even though Kong is a drum designer and typically is used for drums, it just has that MPC look and feel that calls out to the inner sampler inside of all of us. You can remedy the time consuming nature of setting up Kong by creating an empty patch where you could just load in your Rex file into the first pad and then that way it will be already set up amongst the 16 pads that you trigger in Kong. So Kong would be a great sampler to use if you want to use those built in effects. And if you like using the chunk trigger function where Nurse Rex will actually break up the sample in certain chunks, depending on how many pads you want to use, then that would be the go to for why you would use Kong. The next sampler that we have is the NN19. Now the NN19 is the classic sampler. While you can do multi samples with it, it's a little limited and it's very simplistic in how you do the keyboard mapping. The NN19 is a great instrument if you want to quickly drop in a sample and just do a pitch sampling. If you don't need to have chops or if you don't need to do time stretching and you just want to get a sample played quickly, then the NN19 is a good bet for you. Next up is the NNXT, the big brother of the NN19. While the NN19 has a very small sample info display, the NNXT has a larger sample info display. And that's good because you have the availability to do advanced keyboard mapping and sampling sample grouping. I would use the NNXT if I already have my samples chopped because then I can drag the slices into the NNXT and then I can auto map them chromatically and be able to play them on my MIDI keyboard. So if you already have your samples chopped or if you know you're just going to be playing the sample at different pitches, then you could use the NNXT. Next up, we have the Dr. Octorex Loop Player. Dr. Octorex Loop Player is another great instrument if you already have a Rex file because you can just drag and drop that Rex file into the instrument and be able to play on your MIDI keyboard and or play the Rex file exactly how it is. It does have eight different slots that you can load in different Rex files so you can have multiple Rex files loaded into one instrument and be able to choose from which variation or which sample you want to work with. Lastly, we have Mimic. And the major pro of Mimic is its time stretching capabilities. You can drag in your sample and be able to pitch that sample up or down and using the different time stretching modes, you will be able to speed up or slow down that sample and get it to sound exactly how you want it to sound. Unlike the other samplers where if you change the pitch, you also change how fast your sample is being played. So those are some of the pros and cons of the different samplers that are inside of Reason. Now let's actually take a listen to how we could use some of those samplers with some beats that we've created in Reason. Starting off with the NN19, we have this sample right here. We're just going to be playing different pitches with this NN19, but we can drag and drop that sample into the NN19 and we'll be able to play the different pitches on our MIDI keyboard. 
We pitched it down a half note from C to B. And then we looped that sample a couple of times, added in some pitch bends, and this is what we got. So with the N19, we're using one chop of the sample and we're just looping that using a lower pitch. Now let's listen to what we did with the NNXT. For the NNXT, we're gonna drag over our sample and we're gonna add it into the NNXT a couple of times. And this time we're gonna change the sample start in order for us to get our different chops. First, we're gonna select all of the samples and then we can go to auto map zones chromatically. And that will allow us to be able to play each of these samples on our MIDI keyboard starting on C1. And from here, we're just going to adjust the start for each of these samples until we can get the sound that we want. And here is the sample chop that we have. Next up, let's take a look at Mimic. We'll load up the instrument, reset it, and then we'll add in our sample. For this sample, we didn't need to prepare any chops. We can use Mimic and we can use the sensitivity to set the chops for us. Once we change from pitch to slice mode, we can see all of the slices that appear. We can change our sensitivity so that we get more or less slices. And then we'll be able to play slices on our MIDI keyboard. Here is a chop that I've prepared using the sensitivity knob on Mimic and using that loop. Let's change our time stretch to advance. We can drop down our speed to about 43% and then we can drop down our semitones and we'll be able to get this sound. Here's a pattern that I prepared for this track. With a little bit of automation, we're able to drop down the EQ high cut and give us a filtered sound for the verse section of this track. Now let's check out the Dr. Octorex loop player. We're gonna start with this sample. We're gonna create a rex file by setting a slice on each half note. And then we're going to bounce this as a rex file. Right click and hit bounce clip to rex file. Now we have a rex file that we can create. We have the added ability of being able to play this rex file with our mini keyboard. We can change the transpose. Or we can go higher. We can turn up our release on our envelope and turn our polyphony down so that way the loop will just play all the way through. Here is the pattern that we created using these sample chops. For our last track, we'll use Kong. Here's what the original sample sounds like.
And since we already have that Rex loop ready, all we need to do is drop in a Kong, reset the device, open up our show drum effects and choose the nurse Rex loop player. From there, we just need to add in that Rex file that we created by going to song samples, all self-contained samples and finding the Rex loop that we want to add in. This Rex loop is already pre-sliced. So we have the availability to go in between the different slices and we can turn on the trigger for those slices. And then we can use our hit type and set it to slice trigger in order to set these pads up to play by the slice. But there's an even easier way to do this. If your Rex file doesn't have slices that are equally distributed, then you could just use trunk trigger. In order to set this Kong up so that we can use it to play our sample, we need to do two things. The first thing is to set up our drum assignment by changing all the pads to play on the drum one. This will ensure that each of the pads are playing from the same Nurse Rex that we set up on the first pad. Secondly, we need to change our hit type to chunk trigger, which will be hit type number two. So we'll set each pad to number two. What this does is it creates chunks that will then be distributed amongst the different pads. In chunk trigger mode, you can select how many chunks that you want to split your Rex file into. If you don't want all 16 pads, you could separate the Rex file by four pads or any other variation of number of pads that you want to use in order to play your sample. So to set up this Kong, I'm going to turn down the velocity on the Nurse Rex so that way it doesn't read how hard I'm pressing the pads. I just want them to play at the same velocity and I will pretty much leave everything else the same. But remember, you have the availability to use all of the Kong effects, including reverb, tape echo, filter, compression, EQ and so on and so forth. Let's check out how we chopped up this sample. I added in this house loop from Loop Supply. As well as some of my own drums and redrum. Some bass. that you guys have enjoyed this exploration of the different samplers inside of Reason and some examples of how you can start sampling inside of Reason today. If you're looking for more tutorials or more videos, make sure to check out this video next. My name is Chris Reed. Until next time, peace.